Hey folks, this is DIY Guy123 and I've got a few friends in the shop today. We're tearing down a 2005 Toyota Matrix, which is the same thing as a Pontiac Vibe. Pontiac Vibe. So in my comments, I'll have listed the compatible years where this engine is the identical engine. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms are the radiator failed and leaked all the coolant out and the engine overheated and it went into automatic protection mode and shut the engine down and we have got a new radiator in here fixed the leak fill it up with coolant everything was running great again but it started taking coolant so where was that happening well uh, with an overheat situation one of the first things you check is uh, potentially a bad head gasket or a cracked head or something wrong with the head and uh, so to prove that's the case there was significant diagnostic efforts uh, to, to try to identify the source of the leak. We went through pressure testing, the cooling system, and ultimately that was the um, method that helped us determine that the head gasket was bad. And when the plugs were out of it and you pressure test the cooling system, we could watch coolant pool on top of the number three cylinder. Uh, so that's a very, uh, very clear indicator that the head gasket was bad. Other methods we tried to just understand the degree of failure and a little bit more about it. Uh, we did a compression test. It was interesting because the compression on all four cylinders was within 10 PSI from 150 to 160. And yep, yep, 150 correct. to 160. Yep. And uh, also uh, we experimented with a leak down test, but we had some very peculiar behavior. Uh, the engine seems to run fine. It drove here. It seemed to be not missing anything like that seemed to have decent power but when we went through our leak down test we had we only tried it with uh, the middle two cylinders we had air not leaking like not hissing like roaring out of the intake so logic would say that means the intake valves are not fully closing uh, we did have the engine not a top dead center but we were very careful to check all the cam lobes we made sure that the cam lobes were up and not pushing on any of the intake or exhaust valves and we knew that was the case by spinning the bucket so we could tell that there was no tension on the bucket by the uh, cam lobe and that would ensure that the valve was closed so we doubted uh, both our knowledge of how a leak down test should work and also um, i guess we thought potentially the intake valves were not fully closing. Uh, upon further consultation with the mechanic, we learned that, well, a compression test can come out good because the duration of time that's available for the pressure to leak down is so small in a compression test. The engine rolls over at whatever speed the starter can roll it, and there's not sufficient time for a uh, minor leak to have air, um, you know, bleed down. So that's maybe why the compression test looked really good. Uh, but with the leak down test, it's a static test. Uh, we're not changing anything in the engine and we're waiting many, many milliseconds and seconds and so on, waiting to see how the pressure will drop down. So that may fully explain why the compression test was good, but the leak down test looked really bad. So we could in fact have bad intake valves in this and that will be checked by a machine shop. So that's all the uh, diagnostic work that we did to get to the stage where we decided we wanted to pull the head. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my trusty helper to talk about all of the steps uh, that it took us to get to this stage. I know we've already done all those things, but he'll, he'll explain the high level steps and hopefully anybody that has to do this job will do, will, uh, you know, go through this procedure step by step and, uh, or component by component. That's how we'll talk in those terms. And also we've got some tips on the gotchas. So 